What's up? It's Jared Cagle. This is a podcast called Burning Questions because we are answering your burning questions. Okay, our fourth episode is uh, right now, and we're excited to welcome a very special guest, Sam Bowman. How you hey, doing? I'm glad to be here, man. Yeah. Feeling good. Yeah? Life is good. Just got married. Yeah? It's fresh, man. Yeah, it is month fresh. In. Yeah. One month, 30 days. Well, a little more than a month. I got to give myself some credit uh, <laughs> for the extra few days. Yeah. It was November 2nd. Okay. Uh, are you, you know, you were there. I was there. I was there. Time flies, mm -hmm. especially this time of year, Christmas. Uh, are you guys pregnant yet? Not yet. Okay. Lord, Lord willing, <laughs> yeah, we'll hold off for quite, quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're shooting for. Uh, so. well, I've known you for a long time. So I feel comfortable asking those sorts of questions, mm -hmm. even yeah. though everybody else is uncomfortable with me asking it. <laughs> uh, we grew up backdoor neighbors, right? I was uh, I moved into the neighborhood that you were already in. Well, how old were we? Eight, seven? Well, you got that backwards. I moved into your neighborhood. Oh, I was there first. You were there first. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was giving you credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were the OG. I was the new kid on the block. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we've known each other for a long time. I was in your wedding, you were in my wedding. Special days. Facts. Mm -hmm. um, so we brought a candle today, and it's Christmas themed. Just so you know, I know you're new to this. Mm. Every episode we have a candle. Cool. Because candles are a thing, you know? Yeah, dude. If That's not, a vibe. Right? Talk to me about that. Man, Taylor, my <laughs> wife, is so into candles. Like, It's great because it's the best... Christmas gift because they're like five bucks, ten bucks at Kohl's. Okay, so you like to go to Kohl's for your candles. You can't All miss right. on a candle because it smells good mm -hmm. and it's just like it's cheap. And honestly, it's just like a, a really easy go to option Love for it. gifts. Love it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out for Christmas. Yep. And it's, it's burning uh, while we talk, hence the theme burning questions because. Each I week, there. yeah, we come with a different question that a student submitted for us to answer. This okay. week, the question that we're talking about is a significant question, a big question, uh, and truthfully not easy to talk about. Um, we brought you in because of your experience in some of these things, and so I'm excited about how this is going to play out. You don't actually know what this question is. Unless you've cheated off my paper, as we no said. man, you said you wanted okay. it to be raw, okay. so I okay. perfectly, right. yeah. I purposefully did yeah. not look at the sheet. Okay, so. yeah, I want to know what's coming out of your heart in the All moment. Right. You know, right. that's man, how we do it. Here. Let's tackle it. Cool, bro. I'm excited. Cool. Uh, so today's burning question, as I said, it's significant and difficult and emotional. Uh, that question is: If you commit suicide, are you going to hell? Whoa, you weren't kidding, man. That is, that's a big one. Um, I mean, and my first reaction is that uh, I don't believe, I don't believe that the Bible teaches that. Um, and I remember when I was uh, really struggling with depression that that was one thing that made it harder when I was suicidal is that I didn't believe that that was the truth. Um, I, I got to a place where um, I knew that if, if I committed suicide, that all my pain would be over, like instantly, emotionally, all the stuff that I was going through. And the Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so it's just like instantly. But at the same time, I knew also that that would be like the most grievous thing to God's heart because... Mm. Like even in the midst of my darkness, I knew that um, I knew that God was somewhere there. Like I couldn't, I didn't really like sense His presence or feel, you know, Him with me. But uh, I still knew that, you know, that that was true. And I still, um, and, and it's it's kind of hard, you know, wrestle wrestle with that question back and forth. But ultimately. I, I felt like I really uh, kind of just landed on, nah, I don't think so. Like, I, I really don't think so. I think that there's been people, um, you know, 
Jared Wilson. Mm -hmm. uh, you think about a guy named like Jared Wilson who was about maybe like a month, it has it maybe been two months ago, big church leader. If you look at some of his stuff, he was very outspoken about mental health and he was very vulnerable about his struggles and did he, he started this organization called Anthem of Hope mm -hmm. and they like his mission in life was to kind of like equip the church to deal with people that are struggling with mental health like shine light on it because it's not something that's talked about you know right. it's very taboo there's a big stigma that's still there like if you're a Christian you struggle with this type of stuff like where do you go to talk about it because nobody wants to you know everybody wants to run from that topic and uh, so he did a lot of great work and then uh, he ended up you know losing the fight to depression and committed suicide about two months ago it's heartbreaking you yeah know, to hear about it but at the same time um, his organization is living on is thriving his wife is still um, resolved you know to continue the work that they yeah. I think they were doing it together yeah and she's carrying the flag and continuing on and um, so it, it's really hard for me especially to see somebody like that with like so much fruit in their life and so much you know it's like there's no question if you look at his life that he was a believer and it's like I just think that um, I feel like there's some places that I remember hearing one time there was a there was a talk from uh, from Francis Chan at Passion, and it made me so angry. He said something about this this topic, and he was like, he didn't say anything definitive, but he was like, I'm I'm just gonna say he was talking about a verse in the Bible that said like, and you know if you continue to the end, you shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, something like that. And he was just like, I'm just saying, like, I don't know, but if if you have if you know somebody that's committed suicide, they might not be in heaven because it's like those who are believers persevere to the end. And I was just like, I was so angry when I heard that. I was just like, bro, first of all, you have no idea like what it's like to be in that situation. And uh I'm sure he said it like from a good place, but I think um I don't think that that's true, and I think that like that's um, just a really shallow, small view of God's grace. Because I think that if you just look at the nature of what God, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like either you're either you're a believer and you're a Christian. Or you're not, you know, and if you commit suicide as a believer in Christ, nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. I mean, either that's true or it's not. And so either you're in Christ and suicide can't separate you from that. Not, I mean, that, I mean, it says like, that's what it says, you know, there's nothing, nothing means nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You can't do it. No, I mean, so So then the, it really just begs the question. The question really to be asking is like, are you in Christ? Yeah. Do you have a relationship with him? You know, and if you do and you still suffer, like, that's a reality. There's a lot of Christians out there that are suffering through. But it's like, if you're thinking about committing suicide, man, talk to somebody, you know, um, and make sure you're in Christ, like, make sure you're in Jesus, like, there's no, because there's no hope of, uh, you know, turning around for a place where you're even thinking about throwing suicide into a conversation. If you don't know Jesus, man, like, that's the first question that you need to be asking, like, who is he? Like, what did he come to do for me? You know, what, what, what does life in him look like? Because, you know, if you're not a believer and you're struggling with suicide, thoughts like man that's the first thing it's like what is life in Jesus he came to bring life that was abundant mm -hmm. and he promised that and so it's like if you haven't discovered that like that's where you need to start yeah so discover the life that yeah. he has to offer and even who no that that perspective nothing can separate us from the love of God you know um 
just like no one sin is enough to remove the gift of his grace that he get not to let's let's just be clear about the fact that his grace to save us is a free gift right right it's only by faith that we can receive that free gift right and so it's that not something means there's no strings attached right there's no if you continue to the end if you're faithful until the day you die if you no ifs yeah no ifs ands or buts it's a free gift yeah. if we talk about grace without conditions and love without conditions everywhere else but in this isolated highly emotional circumstance right namely suicide it, it falls apart we yeah. can't segment the grace of God as if it applies unconditionally to every other area of our lives except for this one yeah because of the finality I understand where the questions coming from and I'm absolutely empathetic um, but it's important for us to realize that we can't isolate any instance as if to say, well, yeah, God's love is unconditional for me everywhere else but here. There right. is no ifs. There, there are no buts. Yeah. God's love is unconditional and his grace is sufficient and it's free. And it was given to us and it's, he is not taking it away. It was given to us. We didn't earn it. Therefore, we can't lose it. Right. And so Absolutely. it's interesting. I want you to talk a little bit more for the person that's asking this question, maybe um, as a, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be pithy with the, with the word like excuse, but maybe they're asking this question as a way out. You know, they're hoping that uh, this, if you commit suicide, are you going to hell? is not true so that they can end their struggle and end their pain. Yeah. Um, maybe talk to that maybe talk to that person and encourage them mm. in that season if you if you could. Man, like I said earlier, like I've been there. So I first of all I understand uh, if that's you, I understand that feeling and that thought process. And uh, it's crazy because dep depression is the most, it's a tricky uh, disease in your mind. And, um, you know, kind of like last night I was sharing that uh, I've heard depression defined as the inability to construct a future. Literally what's going on in your brain when you are depressed is that like the part of your brain that can uh, dream or imagine or hope like just completely shuts down, like actually physically like that is cut off in your brain. And so I would say to that person, like your brain is broken. And the way you're thinking and the way you're feeling about your life, like you, you feel like there's no hope. You feel like this is the only way out and that is your reality and it's real. Like you, that your brain is telling you that for a reason, but, the, but it's treatable. Mm. It's, it is treatable. Like it's treatable physically. You can, get on a medication that will change the way that your brain thinks. It's treatable spiritually. Um, you know, Jesus says, that, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And he was talking about a rest that's like a soul rest. He was talking about people that are burdened and weighted down. And I shared that verse last night that he says, like, God says, I dwell in a high and a holy place, but I also dwell with him who is broken and lowly in heart and in Isaiah he says that a bruised reed I will not break and a smoldering wick I will not snuff out and it's like man when you're in that place and you press in and cry out to God in the midst of your suffering you experience him like you never have before mm -hmm. because that's just the nature of God is that he's uh, he's near to the suffering, near to the brokenhearted, and uh, and and you know I, I remember feeling like I had tried that already, like I tried, but I remember like just asking God to just take away my pain, and maybe His answer was not to take away my pain instantly, but like I'm with you, in wow. it. and I remember being so frustrated and just kind of kind of having an attitude towards God where it's just like. Well, that didn't work for me because really I just wanted it to go away and I wanted it to not be a lifelong struggle 
And it's like, well, what if it is a lifelong struggle, but what if I'm also with you through it? And what if I'm like, what if I'm like stripping away your identity of relying on yourself and, and teaching you how to lean into my power, lean into me every day? And it's like, I don't really like that answer from God. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want to be able to stand on my own two feet and do everything myself. But it's like, man, ever since I've been struggling with depression, I feel like it's this limp um, that I've been given, that I walk around with. And it's a struggle. It's a battle that I face every day. Like, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm talking about it like it's in the past, but it's also a present struggle. Sure. And there are definitely degrees of struggle and depression, you know, like being suicidal. That's the most extreme degree. Mm -hmm. um, but there's hope and it's treatable. And so I would just say to like somebody who's in that area, it's just like question, you know, if you're doubting, doubt your doubts as well. Like mm. doubt the doubts that you're having because depression, the nature of it is so tricky that uh, you're not thinking clearly, and 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 even though it feels like there's no way out, there's no hope, things will never get better. They do, and my life is a testimony to that. Yeah, you know, and uh, and it's not. And I, I went through like suicidal episodes, like not once, not twice, not three times. I mean, it was like over and over and over. It was a very up and down roller coaster thing. So it wasn't just like I just, you know, all of a sudden just snapped out of it. I mean, it's been a war, mm -hmm. you know, but um, I've gained so much ground and taken back so much um, territory that the enemy has, you know, yeah. has take, had taken for a while and built up strongholds in my mind of the ways that I would think negatively or see the world through a negative, depressed lens. And all that can be taken back. So take back the land. Yeah. <laughs> Doubt your doubts. Mm -hmm. Watch out. Have you ever written that down? I was looking for a pen. I'm gonna... I don't know, man. But that was everything in ministry is plagiarism. That's what my <laughs> facts. Yeah. So <laughs> facts. somebody said it a long right. way. I heard it. I don't know cool. where it came from. So when I say it, I don't have to give you credit. No, you don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. isn't that beautiful? Would, would you you mentioned no, no uh, bibliography, no nothing. Love it. Just, yeah. You mentioned Isaiah 57. I just want to close with this, and it's really interesting in talking about pain and, you know, when we want the relief from pain. In a lot of ways, we're, we're asking to become sufficient and comfortable and yeah. peaceful in and of ourselves. And we want God to do it, and we want to give Him credit, but we want to be able to get up tomorrow and not need Him again. Right. If we're being right. honest. And right. so this is what the Lord says, who is high and lofty. He who lives forever, whose name is holy. This is what you were quoting. I live in a high and holy place, but also with him who is contrite and lowly in spirit. But here's why. To revive the spirit of the lowly yeah. and to revive the heart of the contrite. Mm. So in that place of brokenness and surrender, when we do come to him who is worthy and holy and high, and don't try to become holy and high and comfortable in and of ourselves. He revives us. He gives yeah. us life. He breathes life into us, which is incredible promise in the face of this very question that a lot of us are asking and a lot of us are scared to ask, you know, about suicide, about depression, about anxiety. And what the enemy is trying to, the land that the enemy is trying to take from us God doesn't want to remove all the pain and the brokenness from us. He wants to revive it as we surrender to Him. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing you say. And it's, yeah. it's a beautiful... And I think, too, that it's, uh, you know, when, he, when God revives us and gives us life, it's not a better version of the same life. It's a totally new life. So good. You know, from death to life. So good. With a new life. Like the whole New Testament just talks about new life in Christ. What it means to be in Christ. So Put into Him with a new life. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives so in good. me. And so it's like a totally new, absolutely new life that rises up in you. So good. My man.
Great stuff. Thanks for being with us. Yeah. It's been powerful. It's been my pleasure. Yeah, we'll have you back again real soon. <laughs> real <laughs> Sounds soon. good, man. Thanks. <laughs> Enjoyed it. Thanks for listening to this episode of Burning Questions. If you have a burning question that you've been longing for an answer to, DM us on our Instagram at cmcstudents underscore.